This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer, songwriter, and actor from hey. London, <laughs> England. His name is Nate Simpson. Mr. Simpson, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Great, great. Thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. No worries. Now, we're catching you right before you release your latest single, which is called Strong. Um, we're going to get into that, too, in just a minute. Uh, but before we do, um, tell us a little bit more about Nate Simpson. So as you said, I'm a singer, songwriter, actor. I feel weird claiming that part sometimes, but yeah. Um, from London and yeah, and, you know, hardworking, <laughs> hustling artist, you know, yeah. Okay. Now, um, you're born in, were you born and raised in the London area? So, no. So, I was born just outside of the London area, um, a little town called Slough. I'm a small town, small town guy. <laughs> um, and then now I live in London. In London. Okay. Um, so, take us to your, um, your childhood. Um, um, was music always played in your home or how did you discover this thing called music? Yeah, so um, when I was very, very young, my parents would always be playing music around the house. Uh, my dad was a huge, is more of a huge music fan than I guess anyone else in my family. So he would always be playing, you know, uh, we, we're of Jamaican heritage, so it, he loves, you know, soul music, um, reggae music. Just anything that told great stories. Bob Marley was always a prominent feature. Sam Cooke was always a prominent feature growing up for us. Um, and yeah, and it just, I think that influence just rubbed off on me. And um, yeah, from very, from very early on. And I, I just remember always, actually, I actually remember my dad giving me a, like a tape player, a cassette player. And um, I would put on, he gave me like a cassette player with a Bob Marley album and I'd always play it. And I always just remember from very young playing it to suit, playing songs to suit how I would feel. Um, and and then I'd, I remember <laughs> picking up little things around the house, a box and just whatever it was and tapping on it and banging on it because I, I wanted to play along, I wanted to be a part of the music. I just remember that feeling knowing that I wanted to do that. And um, this was way before I even knew I could sing or anything like that. And I said to my mom one time, she said, what do you want for Christmas? Must have been about four years old. And I said, I want a drum kit. <laughs> and I think she kind of was just like, I, don't, I do not need that, need that noise in my house. <laughs> so, um, so she got me a piano and I just remember picking it up and she had a friend at the time that, that would teach me a little bit, you know, and I just remember just loving the sound, loving um, people playing melodies and, and all that stuff and just being in awe of music. And I think first and foremost, I realized about myself is that I'm a music fan. You know, I just love music and um, all the rest of it comes second, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, so did you, I'm sorry, did your mom get you a... Uh... So she didn't get you the drum set. She got you. Yeah, I drum set. <laughs> so I can't play drums. I say all that to say. And still to this day. <laughs> How did you, um, now you're, you said you're four, four years old, five years old. Mm. Um, how did you, when did you decide, hey, this is what I wanted to do? Um, so there was, there was, there was a defining moment. I think, I say defining moment. I think there's always different different stages to different things that click for you that say, oh, okay, 
hmm, maybe I can do that. Or, you know, there's, there's always different signs and stuff. But I think one of the things for me was um, my mom coming home, I was about 12 years old, and she played, bought me um, the documentary or the biopic of The Temptations. And, and I remember just watching it and just being such a huge fan of their, their voices, their sound, their style, just in awe. And yeah, so from there, I just literally just went on to do all the research of, you know, the greats and Stevie Wonder, um, who else was at that time? Ray Charles, um, Aretha. <laughs> um, just, I just loved, and I think more specifically that music for me, because I just loved the way that they told stories. I loved the, the passion, the truth behind um, everything they sang. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so let me just back up a little bit. So uh, you get the uh, Temptations um, movie, DVD, whatever. Yeah. Did you ever want to, f- you and your, I guess you guys call them mates, or did you and your yeah, yeah. ever want to? Yeah. Group? <laughs> well, my fr- I never really had, because um, I'm from a small town, so I never really grew up around people that were in music or, or sang or anything at all. Um, and actually where I'm from, it's kind of very rare that people do kind of go on to perform or, you know, so I'm, I am feel like I'm kind of a bit of a rarity where I, in the town that I'm from. Um, it's now that I'm living in London that I'm always around, you know, singers and incredible talented, incredibly talented people. But back then there was, no, there was kind of no one. I kind of felt like um, a little isolated in what I was doing, but I liked that, you know. Okay. Did... Um... Did you did you study music in college or how did um, how did you go from hey I want to do music to where you are now? So I basically so like I said there was defining moments and I think that I remember being around the age when I when that after watching that movie and I'd have <laughs> it's so sad because I'd always be playing um, that music around the house and my school friends would come over and they'd hear me sing and they'd be like oh my god you're, you know you're great you can really sing um you should do it and I was like really because I, in my house like, we all just sang around the house all the time I didn't really see it as a, a, a thing quote unquote um and then I think you know when your friends are encouraging you and telling you it kind of gives you that little bit of belief um so then I I got myself a little vocal coach and a piano teacher and just went at it and I think just from doing that I just ne- once I did so once I made that initial step, I just never looked back, and you know, just started training. And I just became. I also became a massive fan, or a massive lover of studying technique and studying the craft and studying the voice and and all that goes into being, you know, a, a vocalist first and foremost. Um, yeah, he sung on a cruise ship too, which I always find kind of. Kind of fascinating. How did you, uh, how long did you do that? And how did you get that cruise ship? Um, well, it's interesting because the cruise ship industry in the UK is not um, as popular as where you're from. Um, but I just, I, I remember getting approached to do it by, by an agent that runs, um, that people that sing on cruises and stuff like that. Um, and he basically said, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's a great job. You know, you, you be singing, um, traveling all over the world, etc. You get to see Jamaica and you'll get to see, uh, where did we go? Cancun and Mexico and all these beautiful places. Um, and I just, I'm, I love to travel. So, so um, when, when the opportunity came about, I said, yeah, of course, I'd love to do it. Um, so I did that for about three to four months and um, left that and it was a great opportunity. I don't think I could ever do such a long stint again, um, but it was a great training ground actually because we we had to sing every genre. We had to sing, we had a pop night, we had to sing, we had a rock night, we had a soul night, we had a jazz night, um, we had a music theater show that we had to do. So it was a great training ground in the sense that um, it really forced me to dive into my craft and um, and don't and not box myself in. You know, I think sometimes as artists, especially in this day and age, we kind of feel like we have to have 
this sound, which is like this trend that everyone's doing. And it's like, you know, you have to find your voice. And I think that doing that allowed me to find my voice within whichever, you know, music we were doing. And, and I, I'm so grateful for the opportunity because I think that I look back on it and I'm like, wow, I, I was singing every night these songs with, with a full band um, and they, they weren't easy songs, but it was my job when I had to go out there. And also you guys, um, and you know, the, port, the, the ship ported out of New Orleans. So you guys are very honest. Americans, <laughs> you don't play when it comes to music. Like, <laughs> I remember like finishing the show sometimes and we'd be performing every night and we'd have guests come up to us and be like, that was amazing. I really liked um, how you did that that song. Um, but that one suited you a bit more or, you know, like you guys just don't play <laughs> when it comes, you know, when it comes to music, which, which again, great training for me. Um, yeah, so that was that job. Okay. I don't want to harp on the uh, cruise ship too much, but let me ask you, uh, on, when you do a cruise ship, mm. um, do you have a lot of free time on a cruise ship? Uh, because shows are generally in the evening, right? Or yes, um, yeah, you do. It depends on depends on who you work for. I mean, I I now st still do cruises every now and again, but I do it more as a guest performer. So um, you literally fly on for a week, and you do two shows a night. Um, so in the first night, you it might be like two days. The second day that you fly on, for example, you'll do um, you'll do two shows, and then you'll have three or four days off. And then you'll do another two shows, um, which I really like doing as a kids performer because, well, a there's more, it's more freedom to just be and, and do um, as you please, and also you get to see the places that you go to. So it's actually one of my favorite gigs. People always ask me like, what, what do you love doing most um, of all the opportunities that you've gotten to have in the industry? And I say I love doing the cruises because truly, not only is the the check very correct <laughs> but, but also um you get to travel you get to meet people you get to it's a holiday you know um, yeah. and at the same time and then you know when 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 it's time to to do your show or or you know to do your gig you then you step into being a professional again and you give you know 100 you give all that you got you know yeah yeah you get to see the world on someone else's dime right you said it. <laughs> so, it, and and that's amazing for me because I've been able to see, I've been able to travel all over the world, but through because of not just because of that that job, but um, but that's one of those jobs that you you know you have to travel to do. So, you know, I love it. Okay, so that experience on the cruise ship did that lead you into the theater, or how did that come about? It came about because different people in the industry um, that I had been mentored by um, had advised me. They'd said, you know, you're a great singer and it's, it's a great way for great singers. Theatre is to make a great living and also to um, expand and to learn and to grow um, and to build your name, you know, and, your, and, and let people know who you are. It's a great way to put yourself out there, basically. So... Um, I, I did, and it kind of, at first was a bit daunting because I kind of more saw theatre as like Les Mis and Phantom of the Opera and like very traditional style, style um, um, theatre. But then, you know, I, I, I got given the opportunity to go and see shows like Motown or like uh, Dreamgirls or, you know, shows that just were a bit more me. And then I said, okay, do you know what, let me give it a go kind of thing. And I got back from the cruise and I did... Um, a three month tour doing Nat King Cole, which was like a theater show stroke, like a live performance. Um, and that was like me dipping my feet into it, um, which was an incredible experience. And then after I finished that, I said, okay, now I'm ready to do more. I'm ready to kind of do it on, a, on another level kind of thing. Um, and my manager sent me an email the next week saying, um, the casting team of Motown, et cetera, want to see you. Um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you did uh, Nat King Cole. Nat King Cole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Phenomenal experience. Absolutely yeah. amazing. How long did the, How long did you do that for? I did that for. I did that for three months. Yeah, three to four right. months. Yeah. Right. Um, amazing experience, and then I went straight into um, auditioning for Motown, and then got that job for for a year and a half. 
Okay. One of the best years of my life. From there. All right. So you did, um, you did Motown. Now, um, from what I understand, what is your, um, like we have Broadway here in the, East, in the States. What do you guys call your version of Broadway over in uh, London? We call it the West End. So, the West End. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So that was, that was there in the West End. It was kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> for me at that time, anyway, as before, I was always traveling to do work. So it was actually nice to, to have a base where I was just able to just stay in one place for a year um, and go to the same building every day and know that that was my job. Um, and and generally, I I didn't see it as work because I met... this. First of all, the story is incredible. It's such a great and important part of, you know, our, our history and, the, the, you know, the legacy that Barry Gordy has let, will leave forever now, you know, is... It's like none other. It's such an important story. Um, so it was an honor to be a part of that and to be a part of a story that he wrote the musical himself, you know, which is again, you know, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, and it, 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 you know, beautiful, beautiful people that have literally become my second family. Um, just an amazing, amazing experience, truly. And mm. being that close to home, I'm sure you're your parents and your family and friends got a chance to see you perform. What do they well, think? Of, uh... Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. You know, they did. And um, just, and we did eight shows a week, <laughs> six wow. days a week. So, you know, the opportunity was always there and people would always come and, and show so much love. People loved the show. And I think it's weird, you know, not doing it now. You think, oh my God, I really miss it, you know? You know, but um, yeah, just a great, great time. Truly. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now you're you're back to transitioning to to the music and you yeah. said strong. Yeah. Um, now strong isn't your first um, single, right? No, no, it's not. I had a single. Um, I did a show called uh, Eurovision. You decide, which is a, a, a talent um, show here in the UK, which is actually um, all it's for a bigger contest, which is uh, broadcasted all over Europe. Um, and with, out of that, I had a single called What Are We Made Of? And uh, which is a song that actually more, spe- at the time um, that song was given to me and I was like, oh, I really, really like this song. And then um, I kind of didn't think about it ever again. And it's weird now, the time that we're in now, people saying to me, oh my God, I love that song. I listen to that all the time. It's, you know, um, it, it really, it's really true to the time that we're in now. Um, so I would I would say that that is my my official first single <laughs> kind of thing, um, and then I released a single last year uh, called Hurt, uh, which people can go check out, and and then another single this year called Better, um, and yeah, so and then Better and Hurt will be on on the upcoming project um, with Strong, so yeah, so this but it will be my first EP I would say yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to tell you, uh, when you sent me strong, I, I listened to it and I just loved it. Um, I kept playing it over and over and I actually <laughs> asked my wife what she thought about it and <clears throat> excuse me, she's very critical. Very critical. Right. <laughs> she's like, oh my God, this is amazing. Oh, so sure. is that a song that you wrote? Um, you collaborated with, uh, how did that come about? Uh, so my whole um, new EP that I uh, have created, I, I used to, being a, a musician that plays and stuff, I always used to just put myself in this little box and, and write myself and then take it to the studio and, and, and work with my musicians and we'd create the music together. But I kind of wanted to do things a little different this time. So I, I worked with an amazing production team, just two guys actually, um, one songwriter who co-wrote with the whole project with me and a producer. Um, by the name of Jay, who's co writer, it's the, his name is Cordell, and um, he's actually one of you guys. Um, I think he's from North Carolina, I want to say. I, I collaborated, sorry, yeah, I collaborated with an amazing um production team. Um, by the name, I, I didn't they think they specifically have a name, but they always work together. Great songwriter by the name of Cordell, who's I think he's from North Carolina, um, and Jay, uh a great producer from here, from here in London. And actually working with the two of them was amazing because um, it was just amazing to have 
you know, uh, different life experiences um, in your music. I, I think that it's important to, for artists to know not to box themselves in, you know, and to work with other people and not to think that they have to do everything and all the stories have to come from them all the time. So I just, you know, I love sharing um, um, in creating this project and truly I'm so proud of it. I'm truly so, so proud of it because we, 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 we laughed and we joked and spoke about life and then put it all into the music, you know, so. And also just working with people that I respect and I think are hugely talented as well. Okay. What was the um, what was the meaning behind strong? So strong is basically just about simply it's it's just a simple love song of just being in a relationship and being able to give your all and recognizing when when you're with that person how how effortless and free freeing it is when when you can give that and when they give it back and it's reciprocated and um, I always tell people um, love is freeing and love is not like encapsulating it. And, and when it is freeing and when it, when it, when it does that and it's healthy, it makes you strong. Um, so that's basically, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the single. Okay. Well, like I said, I, I think it's, I think it's great. I think once it's released and people listen to it, um, I think they're going to love it. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Now, 2020 is the year of COVID. We all know that. And we were talking offline. Um, you know, I know that uh, some parts of the U.S. is going back under lockdown. I think you were saying that maybe perhaps London is doing the same thing or England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. England's going back into a lockdown on this Thursday coming. Okay. So um, it's, it's, it's been challenging. You know, it's definitely been challenging. Me personally, I've had moments where I've loved it for the simple fact that I can actually be in one place um, and be creative and, um, and and just get into myself a little bit. Um, but then I have other moments where I'm like, okay, itchy feet, I, I miss the stage. I miss connecting with people. Um, and that's, I think that's one of the biggest parts for me, for sure. Okay. And um, so you got strong coming out in the next couple of weeks or so. Are yes. you going to release any more music before year end or? Uh, the, the, the new project will probably be out very early next year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah, I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's my baby. I'm so proud of it. Mm -hmm. I'm just a, a part of me feels like, mm, do I want one more song on it? You know, you know there's some, there's sometimes there's a part of you that, your heart is urging for maybe I've got a little bit more to tell. Let me, but um, I don't know. You know, we'll see. All right. How um, how close to completion is it? It's done. It's finished. <laughs> it's finished. Yeah, all the songs that uh, that are that are currently due to be on it are all wrapped up. Um, I'm just there thinking maybe one more, but we'll see. But all the songs that have been chosen and um, that we're putting on it. Um, I'll, I'll finish all ready to go. Okay. How many, um, if you don't mind, and if you know, how many tracks are going to be on the EP? The EP will be four tracks. Um, okay. But um, like I said, we may add one or two, but we'll, we'll just see. We're, we, you know, we're, we're seeing how, how we feel about things at the moment. But um, as it stands, it's four, and they're, they're all like my little babies, you know. So, so, so proud of the music that we created this year, truly. Okay. Um, now, if we're under, you know, quarantine or lockdown, um, are you going to, have you done like the Facebook live and the Instagram live or how do you plan on, um, getting the word out about your music? Um, it's so strange releasing music in this time, truly. Yeah. Um, our thing is performing you know getting it out there to audience and letting them hear it and experience it live and i think for me that's a, that's oh, it's definitely the, the best part of you know doing this um but we have to be present and we have to realize that that you know we can't do that now and we have to move with it so i i'm not really a, a, a facebook live instagram live person like how everyone's been doing I, I i've never actually done it but i may i may to be honest um I think cause sometimes it's, you know, you can't stay stuck in, in where you were. You've got to move and you've got to accept 
and and you know and figure out you know where we are now and not dwell on where we were so i'm gonna i'm gonna give in <laughs> basically i'm gonna give in at some point soon okay and uh, you might actually even enjoy it uh, i may you're right I may. Yeah. I may um so why don't you uh nate why don't you um plug your um your social media stuff and do you have a website I do. So I am Nate Simpson Live on everything. Uh, my website is natesimpsonlive.com. Um, and yeah, so, and, and, and everything, I'm, I am getting better with the whole social media thing. I, I feel like I, I do, la- I like to live very present and, and just um, kind of not be too ad- addicted. <laughs> uh, in, 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 is one way of saying it, but um I'm getting better. Bear with me. <laughs> it's basically what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's Nate Simpson live everywhere you said, and mm. that's even the, the URL to your to your website. You said. Yeah, natesimpsonlive.com is my website. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you a um, independent artist? Are you signed to a label or? I'm at the moment. I'm independent. Yeah. Independent. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, which I, which, which I, which I love. And I think that, uh, I implore and encourage more people, more artists, um, to, to do, to be, um, you, you get to create from a place of truth a bit more. I, I personally feel, um, without the pressures of what somebody else says you should be doing basically and 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 beyond that you also have to you then realize the other aspects of the industry um you have to study how to how to learn about marketing how to learn about doing social media <laughs> and and design and um, and all those other things that usually you know um someone else is doing for you i think it's so important for artists to know how to do these things for themselves you know Agreed. Agreed. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's important. I, I think from the artists that I talk to, they feel that sometimes being with a label sort of boxes you in. Absolutely. They want to sound like somebody else. Um, yeah. and, and I think because of that, a lot of incredible musicians and singers and artists don't put music out because, because of those pressures. Um, but it's just important not to succumb to the pressure of it and and just and know that you can you can exist without somebody else telling you what to do you know and the only thing that a labels truly bring to the to the to the table um is the money um but if you can get yourself a situation where they understand who you are then that's great you know but you don't it's not something that i believe is necessarily needed um but you know each to their own and I guess and and like I said always say everything you know time uh it's one of those things that you have to listen to um I guess what I'm trying to say is that you have to be in tune with like your spirituality and you have to know like when something's not right for you when something is right for you um and and you know at some point I always say to people why not you know um if if the right opportunity comes about why not but at the same time don't be one of those people that can only do it if there's a label, if there's someone behind you, I guess. Because I've got friends like that, or I know people like that, and it's like, you're so good. People, the world needs to hear you, you know? So, yeah, that's just my take. Yeah, and I think with um, with the internet and social media, um, you can create a, a lot of buzz on your own. You don't... Uh, yeah, you said the money aspect, having the backing is, is important. For sure. Um, but social media sort of, and the internet sort of, kind of evens things out where where before you needed a you know a a record company behind you now maybe not so much not so much at all yeah 100 percent, 100 percent um but each of their own you know and i think different things work work for different people and so you just got to be true to who you are and what you want yes okay um quickly your um your style strong yeah um I know you said that Motown was a heavy influence. Uh, I think we were talking earlier. You said Marvin Gaye, who's mm. one of my favorites too, by the way. Mm. Um, is that sort of who you pattern? Because I don't, I won't say I don't hear it in your, in, in strong. Yeah. It's, I hear a lot of 
lot of Luther Vandross in your. <laughs> I'm not saying you're Luther. Don't get it. Don't get me wrong. I'm putting that kind of pressure on you. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> I'm not saying that, but uh, I mean, you have, a, you have a a soulful smoothness to you that um, I think it's, it's it's sort of refreshing. Thank you. Um, I well, thank you because I love Luther. <laughs> um, and music, it's so interesting. A lot of people say to me all the time, I, I, I hear this person or I hear that person within you. And I think that um, being a person that loves and listens to so much music, um, I think it's easy to definitely, for people to hear different things within, within my approach and stuff. Um, like I said before, I'm definitely a studier when it comes to music. And, um, one, and I think that's one of the things that a lot of, I encourage now that I'm, you know, I'm starting to teach and stuff a little bit again and in different places and stuff and doing master classes and stuff. And I always try to encourage singers. You have to understand that there is a technical aspect to singing, yes, but there is also, you know, a musical side and, and you have to, you have to study. <laughs> and Luther is none, it, it was, he's second to none, you know, and, and his approach and his delivery in his writing in everything about that, in everything that he does musically. So I, he's definitely one of the people that I, he's, he's what I call a music god. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I love and adore. So thank you for, for saying that. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I encourage people to uh, um, just keep an eye out on you um, and uh, follow you on social media so that when Strong is released, they can go in and, you know, see for themselves. I think it's great. Um, and we'll have links to all of Nate's social media links and his website on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description or show notes. Um, Nate, anything else you want to add before we, uh, before we go? I know it's getting kind of late. Yeah. No, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, like guys, check me out. <laughs> As you said, um, I'm just generally um, in the space where I'm just creating music from the heart, from the soul. Um, and I want, I'm glad that you, lo you love the single and that it, you know, it reflects, you know, everything that I'm, I'm trying to say and do is, is coming off. And you know, in the right way, I said, like from what you're saying, it's really beautiful to always. When people give me their take on and when they hear me and what and, and and the music and my delivery and my approach, my intention musically, I'm so glad that that it's coming off the way that I intend. You know. Okay. Yeah. No problem. And I, I uh, like I said, I, we loved it here in our household. So um, it was great. Now let me ask you a quick question, unrelated to music. Uh, yeah. What's the difference? And here in the U.S., we have dollars and cents. Uh -huh. I have. What's pound. the difference between a quid and a pound? <laughs> a quid is a pound. <laughs> so if you say like I have, I mean, it's not really a term that I hear used a lot at the moment. But like fifty quid is fifty pounds. So it's okay. just a slang word of saying. 50, like for you guys, it'll be $50. 50 okay. $50, yeah. okay. So when we say like $50 or 50 bucks, it's still the same thing. Okay. So <laughs> quid and pound are the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been to the UK? No, but I, I watch, uh, I used to watch a lot of British shows. Okay. You would always say, you know, it's 25 quid. <laughs> <laughs> 25 pounds. It's like, what's the difference between a quid and a pound? Because you guys have cents over there too, right? No, we have uh, pennies. Pennies, so, okay. Yeah, a 50 pence P, we call it. Yeah. Pence. So okay. where you have 50 cents, we have pence, 50 pence. quids, yeah. and pounds. Right. <laughs> All right. So a quid yeah, and we, pound. Also, we also do the whole, um, the army time, which you guys don't really do as well. I know, I've heard. So we do like, so if, if, if it's the evening we have, now it's 16.56. Oh, so you guys do like um, military time. Military time, right. Yeah, which I don't think you guys really do. No, no. You guys the same PM. You AM PM, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. okay. I just just curious, man. No, no, yeah. Oh, one sure. more question for you, man. Since yeah, uh, sure. our, our resident uh, <laughs> this man. Um, what is a bloat? A bloat. I've heard that term too. He's a freaking bloat. 
What is a bloat? I don't know. I've never heard that. <laughs> I've actually never heard a bloat. Yeah, I think it's B-L-O-A-T. Bloat. B-L-O-A-T. Are you sure? I uh, maybe maybe I'm mispronouncing it. I'm not sure. A bloke, maybe a bloke. Bloke. Okay, I'm sorry. Bloke. A bloke. Oh, a bloke is a guy. So like, uh, you you say he's a nice bloke. That's a nice guy. Basically. Nice guy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. Come on. I should. You should be teaching me about some some of your words. <laughs> Lay up on me, man. I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys. I think I feel like you guys are a lot more straightforward than us. To be fair. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you were telling us a story uh, before we uh, were offline. You were talking about how honest um, people are when you're performing. They'll come up to you and tell you if they liked it or they didn't like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, in the States, you guys are very honest. You you will say how you feel. And I love that. I mean, and also what I also love about performing in the States is that your audience, they they will... they're enthusiastic throughout the song. <laughs> so in the, in, in the UK, it's kind of a, a part of the culture to kind of be very still and silent and then give this rapture of applause after the performance. Whereas you guys will, you better sing. Or, <laughs> or you know, it's very, you get that automatic feedback, which is lovely because you I feel, um, you just, you, I feel like the energy and the spirit feels so connected all the time musically. And then also you guys know, like, like you said, like um, you remind me of Luther or or some some people will say, oh, like I really like the, the way the, the, your falsetto or your head voice is like, you don't really get feedback like that over here, you know, or well, you do, but like not as much in terms of like the intricacies of the voice and people, comparing you to like certain people that they love and stuff like you know I just think that um the way that you guys love music is you know we also do but I think it's it's just slightly different in in the way that the audiences receive you know music. yeah I I I think I I know what you're getting at I think for uh some particularly um you know African Americans music is very emotional for us you know and so that's why we're so embracing of other Mm -hmm. people we don't particularly care who does the music as long as it's good music you can relate so I think I know exactly what you mean there absolutely Um, yeah and so having that instant feedback I guess it's important to artists to know you know whether you're hitting or missing yes absolutely 100% and um yeah it's just one of those things that I think as well it's nice to know that you're connecting with people you know um, you saying something, you deliver something in the way that has has made someone feel something, you know. Um, you know, I, 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 that's the whole point. <laughs> Basically, that's why we do it. You know, it shouldn't be, you know, music is a sharing and it's about um, me giving my heart and hopefully being able to say something that has spoke, that speaks to you, you know, or, or, or you can relate to, or, you know. Um, and I just think that sometimes that there is that, like, some kind of I sometimes have that selfish energy where it's a bit like it's all about me I'm the star and you're going to come and watch me and I always say to people with my show it's not it's not that at all like you're coming um and I I present my heart you know and and my soul and you know you go away feeling like touched or moved by something if it's not you know when I'm singing about love I might be singing about life or I might be singing about heartbreak something you will go away with something that you um necessarily that so you personally um can be touched by you know and that is my, that is my intention always and I and I I always say when I do shows uh, it's so important to go out there with an intention you know not just Hi hey guys, I'm, I've rocked up to sing you some songs. <laughs> Why? Why are you here? This is, you know, it's, it's a, a, the thing that I definitely implore artists all the time to to think about. You know. All right. Very nicely. Uh, very nicely put, Nate. Thank you. All right. <laughs> On that note, um, last words from Nate. Um, I'd like to thank you again, Nate, for um, being a guest on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. It's amazing. And I, I, I'm so proud. I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. Um, your show, honestly, it's, it's needed. And, it, you know, um, this is, you know, soul music. I loved your title, you know, soul music, bring back soul music. It, it's the best music <laughs> of all time, you know, and, and um, 
I'm honored that you that you consider to have me on your show. So thank you so much. And I feel like you're doing a good fight and a good justice to to to, to great music. So thank yeah, you. No problem, man. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep putting out great music, man. Uh, thank you. People will find it. Um, <laughs> yeah, people thank will you. find it. Um, that's Nate Simpson. Thanks again, Nate. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. And we'll be right back. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRC WQX. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Nate Simpson. You can find out more about Nate on his website at natesimpsonlive.com. Also on his social media sites by the same name, Nate Simpson Live. You can also check out the profile we did on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. That's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.